my God! Oh my God! Watch the door! Watch the door! They're coming! They're coming! Help! Help! They're coming! They're coming! So we just, we've been talking about watching Invasion of the Body Snatchers uh, ever since it kind of popped up uh, on Prime. And this week we decided to pull the trigger. It was October 1st, and it was a great movie, I think, to uh, to choose as the first movie to watch in October. And it's, what is this, the f- one of, is it, have there been four versions four. of this movie? Four, yeah, four. Yeah. Uh, so there's like a 50s version, this, then an 80s, and then uh, 2000s. So. The aughts. Yeah. Yeah, the there aughts. was a weird one in like 93 on a military base or something. That was with Gabrielle yeah. Anwar. Uh, is that the one? Was it 90s? I yeah. think so. Early 90s. So this is the one that I remember. That This and the 50s ones are really the two I've, I've seen the most. And I got to say, I think this is probably the first time I've ever seen this movie uncut. I think every time I've seen this movie, it's been on really? public on public television. Like not, oh, no not, way. Just like regular, regular TV. TV. Uh, so this was the first time I saw like the boobies and stuff like that. <laughs> the boobies. <laughs> the babies. Uh, See what you missed out on all those all those years? Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. This is a movie that when it came out and I was a kid, I was not a huge fan of because... It was a little slow for me. I was more into the reanimators and uh, maniacs and Dawn of the Deads. And it's not a gory like action this. filled fest, yeah. Yeah, but it, uh, there was a certain charm to it, and I've been a, I've been on the Goldblum bandwagon since Ten Speed and Brown Shoe, one of his first <laughs> TV shows of all, with Ben Vereen. So I go way back with this guy, yeah. and of course Leonard Nimoy uh, being in it doesn't hurt. Um, so I was very happy to go back and. And watch this movie, and I think I appreciated it more. I it, it's, I, I I think it's always been my favorite version of this movie. Although I really want to go back and watch the fifties one now. Um, so yeah. how'd you guys feel going back and watching this? Uh, well, I, I go back and you want to go ahead? No, go ahead. I go back and watch this movie almost every year. It's one of my favorite horror movies. I think it's almost perfect. Uh, pacing. Every time I watch it, it feels like maybe a little slower, but I, f- I think that might just be the way we consume movies now. They're just not as slow as this one was. I mean, this is 40 years ago now. Yeah. Um, but I, I absolutely love this movie. The way it unfolds from the very beginning, almost right away when you see the main characters start to go to work and stuff, you'll see people running in the background or you'll see a police car fly by and it starts right away, but it ramps up. So the first couple times I watched, I didn't even notice it. But then every time I've seen it the last few years, I've really noticed a lot of crazy shit happening in the background. Even just someone in the window of a building as they're walking down the street or someone in a car. There's a lot of weird stuff in the background of this movie. And uh, yep. It's all like Mad Magazine. Yeah, it, it, it's one of my favorites, so I love it. Uh, we saw this. My father took the family to see this when it first came out. Uh, I was 10. And I was already a huge fan of the original. Now, the original is, it's more a Red Scare kind of movie. And the original is fantastic. We saw it in the theater last week. I mean, it's phenomenal. This is more of a, the original seems to be more sci-fi. This seems to be more horror. There's a real darkness running through this movie. And you're, you're right. It's near perfect. And every time I watch it, I actually grow to love it even more. Mm -hmm. Um, From the very, I love the opening of, you get to see the spores yeah on the other planet i think that's it sets this tone and it's really creepy and how they come and you know rain down on earth and you're right the action for what it is the shit hits the fan quickly here and you are right there's a lot of things that you have to watch out for so every viewing you'll find something new which i think is great and it's got a stellar cast it's, you've got, the cast is unreal. <laughs> you got Donald Sutherland at his most Sutherlandly. You've got uh, what's her name, Brooke Adams, who was a hot commodity uh, oh, yeah. back then. You got a young Jeff Goldblum playing a uh, oh god, I'd like a jerk, pain in the ass writer. Which it's a small role, but he was in an even smaller role around that same time in the movie The Sentinel. I know all about jerk, pain in the ass writers. I co-host. <laughs> you sure do. Show with a couple. <laughs> Jack, I'm surprised you didn't whip out the tissues and lotion when you saw that uh, Leonard Nimoy was in this. 
when you think about the fact that you've got Goldblum, Nimoy, and Sutherland all in one movie, uh, and I never really, I kind, I forgot number one that Goldblum was even in this movie. Yeah. I forgot that I, I have not seen this movie in, I don't know, ten years, fifteen years. Like I just, I've been aware of it. Like I, I, I you know, I've seen it a couple of times, but I forgot huge chunks of this movie. There's certain scenes you never forget. Oh, and and I, let's I, not I overlook. Don't overlook that Veronica Cartwright was in this. She's so great. In a year's time, she does this in Alien, <laughs> and melting down very similarly in both movies. <laughs> Typecast. It's it's a really good movie, man. I mean, I just can't say enough good stuff about it. I I remember it creeped me out as a kid, uh, walking home at night. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of really good night scenes in this where you just don't know who's who or what's what. Uh, you mentioned the cast. I noticed something this time. I don't know how many times I've seen this movie. Ten. I saw at the beginning. Do you remember the priest on the swing? And is that Robert yeah. Duvall? Yes. I was. I saw him like, what the, the hell? Is that Robert Duvall? Yes. That was? It's an uncredited cameo. I'm sorry that's to step awesome. on that. Uh, uh, no, yeah, that's cool. It. Yeah. And I just watched it this morning because I didn't realize that was the movie we were doing until this morning. Um carrying my laptop in the bathroom as I'm ironing, as I'm eating <laughs> breakfast, as I'm making the bed. Uh, I, I, it is, a, it is, it was a two hour movie. Yeah. Almost it, on the nose. I think they, they could have knocked a, a little bit off this movie, but it, I don't know. I wasn't actively feeling that, but I think I, I love the dialogue in this and I love that unfolding uneasiness. I think, and paranoia. Yeah, I think what makes it work is I, I was watching it again last night thinking, you know, this feels a little long, but at the same time, they spend so much character time on character stuff that when the replication starts, I feel like it's more emotional. So, you know, maybe when you're kind of getting through, okay, why is Leonard Nimoy? Why do I have to hear all this relationship shit with Leonard Nimoy? But when he shows up later, it's uh, it has more of an impact, I think. Mm-hmm. What was up with that like, bowling glove he was wearing? I, I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> it's like, is he an archer? What is that? <laughs> uh before i forget this uh hunter you mentioned seeing the spores at the beginning and i mm-hmm. love how you see the spores in space they come to earth all that but then you see them replicating plants so yes. that's the first life form they replicate and then they learn to replicate humans after that i thought that was so cool and let me tell you the the birthing of the pod people in this the effects are just great special effects in this movie are great Outside. And I love the fact that you can watch. So you're watching it get born. You're watching the person start to desiccate. Mm-hmm. But if they wake up, I love when you see like the 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 pod person's eyes open up, and then the person who's sleeping, their eyes open up. The pod person's eyes close, and then they start to just disintegrate once you severed that. Yeah, and I love look, when people wake up in the middle of it and they're just dying of thirst because it's like hollowing yes. them out, like sucking all the juice out of them. And when they survive it, you see like Brooke Adams like going for water in the background all the time. Whenever they like go into her room, she's like looking for water. They don't bring call any attention to it. Yeah, all, someone's always pounding water in one in a scene in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the first her boyfriend, once he's a pod person, he's always drinking water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the special effects are are really good in this movie, and it was. It was one of those things that like, my memory of the pod, I was like, oh, I'm going to go back and watch this. It's to be a lot cheesier than I remember it. And instead, I was admiring it, going, wow, for ni- this is 1978? This is really good for 1978. Uh, yeah. the, and the, the other great effect is when the, the human has been conquered and then they shrivel away. Oh. Yes. Tough. When uh, Look, we'll get, we'll get when, when Maud Adams disintegrates. <laughs> Donald Sutherland's arms. And he's just freaking out. Yeah. yeah. That seems messed up. Every time I watch him, like, can you imagine if that happened to someone you loved? Oh. Did you know, know. The little lone fact, but he plays the same character from that movie in Animal House. Really? What? I'm lying. I'm a <laughs> jerk. <laughs> like, huh? <laughs> hey, you know, I wanted to bring this up. Now, people talk about how this is a remake of, of uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I pose that it's a direct sequel. Because in this same movie, guys in it? Kevin McCarthy shows up, Great screaming cameo. about everything. Uh, so there's a potential that this is—he's just—he's ha- happened to make his way to San Francisco at this point, 
and is trying to warn everybody. But it doesn't last long. I'm trying to remember how the 58 version ends, or 55, or whatever it was. Him trying to tell everybody that not to fall asleep and that they're coming. Oh, that's uh, how it ends. That's kind of cool. That's kind of a cool idea. It's so a sequel. It ends like that, and then this is. It begins with that. When he jumped on the car, I'm like, who the hell is that guy? Why do I recognize him? I looked him up, I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. It's the star of the first one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just passed away not too long ago. He must have hung in there. Yeah. Irish blood. The um, other iconic thing about this um, movie is the when the pod people spot you and they, they do the, ah. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. I used to do that to my mother all the time. She would like, she would start coming up the stairs, and I would dart into the hallway and just point down the stairs. She's like, "Shut up, get your room." The the sound design in this, not just that, but throughout the whole movie, again, is it's incredible, particularly for the age of it. There's a lot of stuff going on. Some good music, great sound effects. Um, this movie's it's they do a lot awesome. of really good stuff along the lines where they'll they'll shoot from inside a store out the window or like they'll shoot through things to, and then they'll have sound over a montage or something that's different sound than what's going on on the screen. Like there actually is really good production value to this movie so much that it was jumping out at me. I was like, wow, this movie's very well made. Yeah. Hey, it was directed by the guy who wrote Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, is damn. Yeah. Philip Kaufman. Well, who this is, I think, the only horror movie he ever directed, but his writing credits are absolutely insane. I didn't know he wrote Raiders. That's impressive as hell. He wrote Raiders and Temple of Doom. He wrote all the Indiana Jones movies. I I hold that the Temple of Doom is half horror movie, half fun action. So I could see that. People's scary. hearts are getting pulled out of their chest. <laughs> True. It's uh, scary that I spent money to see that movie. Temple of Doom? Yeah, that movie oh, sucked. Oh, I love Temple. Of I Doom. I loved it as a kid. It's one of no. my favorites. I I I didn't like Temple of Doom. Like the minute they were going down the mountain in the boat, the raft. Oh yeah, that part's stupid. I was just like, okay, this movie. Yeah. The, the whole I was like, this movie's just a pales in comparison to the original. I will say though, this director he had a good two years in a row because he did this and The Wanderers the year after. Oh no, three. Then he did the right stuff. Damn. The New Kids on a Block song? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Philip Kaufman. So look uh, him up. I wanted to mention the, uh, particularly the performances, but particularly um, Donald Sutherland's character. It's, it's a really unique character when you think about it. So he's this uh, health inspector in uh, San Francisco, and he's pretty douchey about his job. He's very aggressive kind of an asshole for the people he's inspecting and at one point somebody says are you a doctor he says no health department i'm a civil servant in just like the biggest <laughs> douche way ever <laughs> but then he has this interesting relationship with uh brooke adams character where have they dated before or is he just no. carrying a super torch for he's her? that he's, he's carrying that a torch for her he's that guy who's friends with your girlfriend that you don't trust and like really intimate friends <laughs> But yes. at the same time, he's trying to help her relationship. So he's obviously in love with her. But he brings in Leonard Nimoy to try to save her relationship with her boyfriend. So he's got all these layers that you usually don't see in a horror movie. And uh, I thought it made him a really interesting hero. And I got interesting in twice in that part. Uh, Nimoy, the great thing about him is this is Mission Impossible era Nimoy. You've mm -hmm. got... Uh, and it's great to see him in a non Spock role. And in this, the, this particular role, he gets to be kind of that. He's not douchey, but he's something like that mm -hmm. in his doctor persona. Then when he kind of is revealed as one of them, he gets more sinister mm -hmm. and he's kind of like the overlooked guy in this movie. Cause he really is great. In he movie. looks, I always thought he looked evil. Like he should have played evil more often. He he did a good job. Uh, he he was this weird Doctor Phil guy, but then yeah. then yeah. he gets sinister and he does a great job. I would have liked to have seen him get more roles like that. To be honest, the way he just deadpanned was perfect for this movie. Yeah, well, he was stuck in Star Trek, so 
<laughs> wasn't much you could do. Uh, I don't. Uh, there was someone else I wanted to mention too. Oh, Jeff Goldblum is so quirky and bizarre in this. You know what? I, this I have a little pet peeve on this because they always portray writers in movies and stuff as these just insecure, neurotic, hyper intellectuals. I have yet to meet anybody like that who writes for a it living. is San Francisco, and he's a failed writer. <laughs> that is true. I I don't know, man. They they do that all the time. Like, man, unless if that's what being beholden to the New York Times book review does to you, then thank God I don't. Yeah. Hey, let's not forget one of the great things about the ending of this movie. Is the is that the ending is first of one of the best endings ever in a horror movie? Yep. Which is now totally spoiled because like that that is the image that people see when they look up this movie. But you also get super zoom on the Sutherland stash. <laughs> you want to get lost in that stash? That power stash. Mm, that thatch work. Yeah, that must have been a hell of a lens on that camera because they go deep. <laughs> <laughs> It's like they're supposed to go into his mouth, and the guy's like, nah, I got to go a little bit up and get some of that stash. By the way, it's a caper. It's a rat turd. Uh, caper! <laughs> uh, the ending is the classic uh, of all time. Like, it's the yeah, it's one of the great endings of the horror movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's honestly up there with the thing for me, with the way they did that. Yep. And I just love the fact that you're heroes are health inspectors like how unlikely is that yeah he's got this fro thing going on he's rocking the stash he's just this nerdy government inspector guy who's you know, care when people zone. break his windshield <laughs> yeah and he just drives away he doesn't even say anything no nah. just takes it um the ending to me is if you didn't like the movie leading up it's just one of those endings that you probably walked away from it thinking it was better than, or you liked it better than you even thought you had it, like while watching it. Because uh, the way they do the whole thing when he is hiding under a dock, by the way, I guess we're in spoilers, but whatever, the movie's 40 years old. Yeah. Um, when he's hiding this under the dock. Spoilers. <laughs> what's that? This whole thing was spoilers. Yeah. They're, uh, they're shining a flashlight for him, and they use the light as a transition to the daylight. Uh, like the it mm-hmm. shines right in the camera's eyes, and then you see Donald Sutherland at work, and it's like, is he just hiding amongst them? What's going on? And they play right. it for a couple minutes, and uh, it's so effective with you not knowing, and then they just hit you with that ending, and it is just the best. Yeah, that movie. Now, just think that movie might have inspired Freddy Krueger. They don't go to sleep. Bad things. It had a lot in common with it. Yeah. The anytime you see a zombie movie where they walk with the zombies and try to assimilate with them. Mm-hmm. So the zombies. Are, I mean, there's there are so many things that you see. Well, like zombies and now. vampires, it's somebody you know becomes one of them, right? Well, you got the Freddy Krueger. Yeah, there's a lot of layers, and you know the the, the term. Oh, they're a pod person now. This oh. movie really, you know, like the the dry cleaning guy, mm-hmm. he's like complaining about his wife, and he's like, "Oh no, it's okay now. It's not my wife." <laughs> uh, yeah. Ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I said, you're you you nailed it, Jason. It's a near perfect movie. There aren't many perfect movies, nor are there many near perfect movies. And this is a great, a great revisit. Like I'm very happy. Like I haven't seen it in years. Came back and just like, oh wow, this is like even better than I remember it being. Like it was And it's on Amazon Prime. Exactly. Yeah, it's hard to beat that. Even the stuff they do when he starts trying to make calls to see what's going on. And it starts becoming harder and harder for him to get through to people. And then all of a sudden, they're just saying his name when he calls in. That's creepy stuff, particularly for back then. Yeah. You had operators and you had to deal with all that crap. Yeah, him in phone booths, like young kids, be like, Where, why is he in that thing? The, the phone doing? booth's a great, great uh, scene because as he's on the phone, this dude just walks up and stands right at the door and stares at him. Doesn't say a word, it's just staring at him. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, God. You never know if somebody is just weird. Right, crazy just San Francisco? Or a pod person. <laughs> right. Yeah, you have to watch the background of this movie because there's so many people and garbage men. Yes. Yeah, that's I, perfect. I was very encouraged because when I said uh, this morning that this is the movie that we were watching, my youngest daughter goes, "Oh, that's my favorite of the four. I'm like, <laughs> wow. so she's seen all four, and this is her favorite one. She's 19. Did either of you see the Nicole Kidman one when it came out? Yeah, I don't remember a ton of it. I don't remember being all that impressed it's one of those ones that i think i've seen like on 
Prime or something. I'm like, oh, I should watch this. Eh, maybe next time. I like the third one. It wasn't bad. Is that the one that's mostly on a military base? Yeah. I only. Are you talking about the? Well, the Blob has the military. Did this one? Uh, Yeah. No, the Gabrielle Anwar one has. There's a military base. It's been a long time. I remember thinking it was all right. It's it's this movie's so perfect though. Like you know, don't remake Halloween. Don't remake this. Don't remake the thing. What are you gonna do? Right. So, oh yeah, the third one is called, just called Body Snatchers from 1993. With the, this one is one of those ones too, though. There's a lot of movies I go back and watch, and I'm like, a younger person could never sit this through this movie and appreciate it. Right. This one, I actually think they could. Uh, somebody hey. who's never seen it, I think they could. I have proof. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I, I showed it to someone last year who'd never seen it. She's in her late 20s, and she loved it. So, I think. Uh, I, I, I agree in agreement with you. I mean, this movie's 40 years old now, and it's just, it holds up so well. Most, for me, most movies before 1980, the pacing is just so different, and the way they shot it and the color grade and everything, it just doesn't translate to a lot of younger people. But uh, this one stands up through the test of time. Make it a two-watch movie this month, or else you have failed Horrortober. This is a great Horrortober. You're looking for a Halloween month movie. This is... Put it on the list. And it's free. Damn it. It's It's free. Listen, along those lines, I was looking through a bunch of movies that potentially I'd like to watch this month. A bunch of the old Hammer movies and things like that. Some of the Universal stuff and and other things like in that kind of realm. Mm -hmm. And even though most of them are only like anywhere from two to five bucks, they're all, they're, they're very little of them that are that are on prime or shutter or Netflix. It's surprisingly. So when you can find one like this, that's on prime that you don't have to drop a couple of bucks to see, jump all over it. And go, <laughs> because drop, you, drop a couple of capers. Cause you know, if we're going to listen 31 days, if you spent five bucks a day, that adds up, you know? So get, get yourself a free one. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to beat this. All right. So, uh, Hunter, what's next week's movie? Next week's movie is a Netflix original called Malevolent. So it drops on Friday, October 5th. I was going to say 6th. And it's about a bunch of paranormal investigators who go to a abandoned uh, orphanage. And it's going to get weird. Coming attraction look good. Well, well, let's hold our breath and hope it's good. You know, all these Netflix originals have been so kind to us with how good they've been the last year. Or so, <laughs> and I, like, I'd rather watch that, on, you know, sitting on the couch of my fat ass and paying money to go to the movies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to watch it anyway. So if I had to talk about it with you, knobs, it doesn't make a difference to me. <laughs> nope. You nope. Here's the thing. Watch some other good stuff. So if this movie stinks, we'll just suck up the episode with other stuff. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There you go. Got it. All right. Well, anything else, guys? Because uh, I think that's uh, that's one in the can for us. Someone let the dogs out. It's time to end the show. We got more reviews on the site. We're starting to get a nice little database thanks to everybody submitting some reviews. So if you're looking for something to watch for Horror Tober, just go there. Click Creature Feature. Click Found Footage, Aliens, whatever you got, and we got a whole list. And follow me on Twitter, where I share every movie I'm watching with my nine out of nine Tana Leaves <laughs> rating system. Keep, keep us posted on what you're watching throughout the uh, month. And then also don't forget to share the link. That'll really help us out a lot. And if you get around to it, give us a review on iTunes. And with that, farewell and adieu, you fair Spanish ladies. Wah.